Okay, question number 22, we're given a whole bunch of information. We've got A, B, C and D are four towns. Uh, we know that B is 25 kilometers due east of A, C is 25 kilometers due north of A, and D is 45 kilometers due south of A. North is directly up, and this diagram is not to scale, which is important because in part A, we're asked to work out the bearing of B from C. Now, if it was to scale, we could measure the bearing with a protractor, but it's not. And I'm just going to do a little thing here and just join these points together uh, because I think it makes it easier to understand this question when you do. So in fact, I'm just going to go all the way through there that joins A, D and C together. It doesn't have to be super accurate because it's not to scale. You just have to get an idea of what we're dealing with here. If we join all these points together, we start to see what uh, what is right angle triangles. We've got C, A and B right angle triangle and A, D and B which is another right angle triangle. So I'm just getting the pen back and um, I've got to think about working out the bearing of B from C. Now, if we draw a north line from C, because that's where we're going from, and a north line from B, because that's where we're going to, uh, you always measure a bearing from the north line in a clockwise direction. So we're interested in that angle that I've drawn on the diagram there. That's what we want to know. Now to work that out, we have to think about what these angles inside the triangles are, first of all. Now, um, we're also given that B to A is 25 kilometers. So I'm gonna write that on there. And uh, B uh, C to A is also 25 kilometers. Okay, now that's what we need for this question. We ignore this for a minute, come to that in a minute. So we know that this triangle is a 90 degree angle here because we're told that, um, a is due, a, due east of B, or B is due east of A, sorry. Okay, so we've got that, which is a horizontal line, and then A and C, so C is due north of A. That would create a 90 degree angle here, which means this is a right angle triangle. And it's an isosceles right angle triangle, because these two sides are the same length, uh, which means that this length, this angle and this angle have to be the same, therefore that's 45 degrees. And that's 45 degrees. Now it was useful to find out that this is 45 degrees because you can see that this angle and this angle add up to make 180 degrees. It's on a straight line. So if you do 180 and you minus the 45, you end up with 135 degrees. And that is the bearing of B from C. So then the question in part B gets even more complicated. We've got calculate the bearing of D from B. So I'm going to sketch the triangle out over here. Okay, a little bit bigger. We've got a right angle triangle. We've got A and we've got B and um, we've got D. So we know that A to D is 45 kilometers. And we already knew that uh, A to B was 25 kilometers. And um, we are asked to calculate the bearing of D from B. So north line goes from B in a clockwise direction. We're working out this angle here, this angle, all the way around to get to D. Now, to do that, we have to think of a few things here, right? What we have to do is think about, well, this angle here that I'm going to mark on is a 90 degree angle. And that we're missing this angle here. Okay. Now we can work out this angle here. It's quite complicated, but we can work out what this angle here is. Now, if we work out this angle here and add it to 90 and then take away it from 360, we're going to find out the missing angle. And I'll come to that in a minute. We'll come back to that in a second. So what this question actually is, when you're finding a missing angle and you've got a right angle triangle, you can use trigonometry. And it's a process. And think about it in a number of different steps. So the first step would be to label the triangle. Now, the side that's opposite the right angle is labeled the hypotenuse. So that's a Y, hypotenuse. Um, this side that is opposite the angle you're trying to find is called the opposite, funnily enough. And then the side that is next to the angle that you're trying to find is called the adjacent. Now, if you um, label that triangle, let's call that step number one and write down label it for your benefit. You don't have to do that in the exam. Then we can take that stage off. Second step is to write the acronym SO, CA, that is an H, there we go, CA, C-A-H, 
and then TOA, T-O-A, and I've split it into three parts. And that's because the S stands for sine of the angle. I'm going to use X there, and I'm going to label that angle X, because that's what we're going to try and work out. Sine of X, we've got C stands for cos of X, and the T stands for tan of X. Now these are just buttons that are pre-programmed numbers into your calculator. Uh, all you have to do is know how to use them. Um, so step three would be to identify which one of these three parts of Socrates we're going to use. We only use one of the three parts. Um, and it's all about what we've been given in the question. If we're finding an angle, it's what two sides have we been given. So we've got the opposite, and we've got the adjacent, so we want the O and the A. And the only one of these three things that's got an O and an A in is TOA. Okay, so we're not interested in that one or that one, even though it's got the O in there and the A in there, we're not interested in those, it's O and A in the same one. And what we can do with that is create a little formula triangle. Okay, O is in the middle, so it goes at the top. And like any formula triangle, the T and the A will go down the bottom. Remember, T stands for tan of the angle tan of x. Um, so step four would be to use that information and substitute um, some numbers in. So we write out, because we're working out the angle, we write down tan of the angle first. We'll deal with tan being on that side next to the angle in a second. So tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. We're then going to substitute those numbers in. So tan of the angle is the thing we still don't know. And that is equal to opposite being 45 and adjacent being 25. Now, to get rid of tan being next to the angle, we have to do something called inversing the tan. So that is a button on your calculator, but let's write it down first. X is equal to, and if you press shift and tan, it brings up tan to the minus one, and that's our inverse tan. And then a bracket opens up and you can type in 45 over 25. Now I'm going to have to do it a bit differently on the calculator I've got, but it still works. Okay, so you um, can type in as it looks on your calculator that and it will give you the angle. I'm going to type it in on the calculator here and I'm going to um, use the second function. So you see that tan is there. I'm going to use the second function to get tan to the minus one. And I'm going to type in the 45 divided by the 25 first, press equals, and then multiply that by the tan to the minus one, which gives me 60.945, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to write down x equals 60.945, and then dot, 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 showing that there's more numbers after that, but I haven't written them down. Um, I'd advise against rounding at this stage, but unfortunately I've got no other option using this rubbish calculator. Um, what we then have to do is remember that that is the angle that we found there, 60.945, um, and we can add that to 90. Now if we add 90 onto our answer, so I'm going to write down x plus 90, x plus 90 is going to give us the missing angle here on this inside bit of um, this whole circle that we've got around here, okay? If that makes sense. So we've got x plus 90 equals, um, use our calculator, plus 90, 150.94, 150.945. Again, don't round anything off. And then all you have to do is take that answer away from 360. So 360, because that's the whole circle, minus your answer, type that into your calculator, that's going to give you um, a number. I'm going to write that down because I can't use the answer button on here. It doesn't work. It's not brilliant. So 360 minus um, 150.945 equals 209.005. 209.005. Zero 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 five five. Sorry, so zero five. Get rid of that five five. Okay, now there is an answer to the bearing because that's the missing bit on the outside of the triangle here. That is the bearing of um, D from B. We've measured on from a north line in a clockwise direction, 
that takes us all the way around here. We found the missing angle, we know that's 90, so we've got this missing bit. It's 209, I'm going to round it to 209.1. And there are your four marks for that question. Really tough um, foundation level question. Only used to ever be on the higher papers, but now uh, trigonometry is a tough topic on the foundation. Um, and that's going to score you uh, a grade five if you can answer these sorts of questions all day long.